All right, everybody, how are we doing today? So, um, so from Rupley, it says, Bojo's Brexit bill in limbo again as MPs vote down fast-track timetable. I'd rather continue covering something I've been covering than just cover a new story. That's just how I am. And I'm going to give you the Brexit coverage, because I care about Britain. And I care about what happens to the EU because it's a globalist organization. I do not like globalism, and I will criticize it to the last. But minutes after approving Boris Johnson's Brexit withdrawal agreement, UK lawmakers have rejected the PM's program motion in a blow to his plans to fast-track the bill through all stages of the House of Commons by Thursday. Uh, UK MPs passed Johnson's WAB at the second reading stage in the House of Commons on Tuesday evening at 320, by 329 votes to 229. The UK government's joy at the result, however, was short-lived as crucial program motion was voted down with 308 for 4 and 322 votes against minutes later. The democratic process at work, folks. That's how it is sometimes, but... Uh, Speaking after the second vote, Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn said Johnson was the author of his own misfortune. Uh, work with us to agree a reasonable timetable, Corbyn added. Johnson complained that the House has yet again voted for delay and created further uncertainty over Brexit. Well, of course, that's what they're doing. It. They're not idiots. They're obviously doing this on purpose. They don't want uh, Britain to leave the EU. EU politicians and EU sympathetic politicians... Uh, will do what they can to uh, create more uncertainty and try to uh, delay or otherwise harm Brexit in some way. And if they push, and if they, when push comes to shove, Boris Johnson may decide to push a no deal Brexit. He may force it through if he has to. That's the position they're putting him in. They think they can just discredit and make it unappealing. But, trust me, this guy, this guy Boris Johnson, seems amazingly stubborn. I really don't think they're, they're, they're going to have an easy fight with him. I really don't. He's pretty damn stubborn. He was pushing that October 31st date pretty hard. And he probably still is. He said he will speak to EU member states about their intentions, and until then he will pause the legislation. Excuse me. The PM confirmed that his policy remains that the UK should leave the EU on October 31st. He thanked members across the House for the hard-won agreement. Johnson has framed the day's events as a victory, as this marks the first time any Brexit bill has been backed by a majority in the Commons. While on the other hand, the opposition sees their rejection of his fast-track timetable as a major defeat. The PM Parliament earlier warned lawmakers that the WAB will have to be pulled if the program timetable motion is voted down, and we'll have to go forward to a general election. Yet Johnson made no mention of an election in his comments after the vote. Common Speaker John Burkow said, however, that the government will indicate how it wishes to proceed in a statement soon. Liberal Democrats leader uh, Joe Swinson said Brexit was not a done deal, and slammed Johnson for attempting to ram his Brexit deal through Parliament. See? I knew he was going to do that. Like I said, this guy seems amazingly stubborn. And really, okay, when democracy fails you, when legislation fails you, it really does become sort of a test of wills. Who is more stubborn? Who has the stronger desire? Is, John, is, is uh, Boris Johnson's desire to get Britain out of the EU stronger than his opponent's desire to keep it in. That's what it's going to come down to, I think. And I definitely think that it's probably for the best. The motion which sets the timetable of only three days for MPs to study the WAB has proven to be controversial, with many lawmakers from across the House critics have complained that three days is not enough time to scrutinize and vote on such a historic piece of legislation. As it stands, the timetable for the Brexit process includes a debate on de amendments to the bill, such as a customs union, and a second referendum on Tuesday night, and continuing until Thursday, culminating in votes at the third reading stage. 
the UK government is desperate to advance the to bill through the House of Commons and the Lords in time for the October 31st deadline, when the UK is scheduled to leave the European Union. I, I'm adding that in because that's what I call them now. Earlier President of the European Council, Donald Tusk, revealed that any decision on whether to grant a Brexit delay would depend on what happened in the UK Parliament this week, but insisted that Bloc would never choose a no-deal scenario. Well, either way, you gotta leave, because the way I see it, this is the European onion. You, it, it claims to just be a financial trade alliance, and yet they're able to make legislation. They're able to create border policies and and basically harass countries within their within their yoke to go along with their with that policy that that to me sounds like a lot more than just some simple trade trade alliance that's a flat out that's a flat out state government that is that is a continental super state that is not a trade alliance if it was a real trade alliance then they wouldn't have any say in what other countries within that alliance did with their borders or what they did with their with certain pieces of legislation, nor would you have politicians dragging their people, kicking and screaming up the river, being sold being sold to Brussels, uh, hand and fist. Their future being sold to, sold to the agenda of Brussels, which is the head of the European Union. The European Parliament is there. They have a parliament. That is not a trade alliance. That is a fucking government. That is a United Nations style government. It's a European super state that is globalism on a continental scale. And the problem with globalism is you can't control that many perspectives and that many peoples and that many nations unless you employ uh, authoritarianism. Because there will be disagreements, there will be ambition, there will be hatreds. And the only way to prevent those from clashing with one another is through authoritarian legislation. You can't do it any other way. You have to force them. It's the same as when the Romans when it tried to conquer the world, or when Napoleon tried to conquer the world. They just found another way. They're doing it through pure politics as opposed to military might. The EU is not a trade alliance. It is a conquest. And Great Britain needs to leave. They should wipe their hands of this globalist crap before it's too late. Before you end up like France. Or even Germany. Well, at this point, though, I think France is worse. You definitely don't want to end up like France. Uh, anyway, that's all. Peace!